G'day folks, Rod Moore here from More Art School and Learn to Paint TV. Welcome to this week's episode. Now this week we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use a different setup for you and um, hopefully you'll get a better view of the painting. So I'm going to be uh, doing this week's painting at a seated position. And we're going to be doing this great little painting here of um, the Fleece Hotel in Whippy, um, Whippy Harbour. So doing a bit of a, a Whippy theme at the moment or English fishing village theme is probably what we're doing. Um, but this is a great little scene uh, and I really liked this photo that I took of the Whippy Hotel, the Fleece Hotel in Whippy. In terms of the project that we're going to do, I'm on a bit of a, um, a UK sort of fishing village harbour kind of uh, <laughs> binge at the moment. Um, a subject that I really enjoy so I thought we'd do a few different paintings of that. So this is Whippy Harbour again. You may, may remember our last episode we did Whippy Harbour in the mist in the early morning. This is another view of Whippy Harbour. Um, you've got the old Fleece Hotel um, on the side of the pier here. You've got the boats in the water. There's a fair few little details and things in here. Um, and you've got this lovely sort of hillside in the background which I really like as well. So you notice the shadow colour in there is quite dark. Okay, it's quite a strong dark. There's lots of strong darks in here and down in the base here around these um, these little fishing boats. So this is a complex um, subject. If you're a beginner, just take your time. You know, just work your way through it logically and uh, take your time with it. Don't rush. And um, if you follow the steps that I go through in the three steps of the Moore method, then you should be able to achieve this painting without too many problems, I would think. Um, Again, just take your time, break it down into the steps and think about big shapes, ignore all the detail. We just want big shapes. So um, if you focus on that, then you should be fine. So I'm going to just pop that there for the moment. And we are going to start off as we always do with step one of the more method, which is our drawing. So in order to be able to achieve that, I'm going to need to get some paint. So I'll just put a little bit of alizarin crimson there. A little bit of ultramarine. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, I'm gonna take my small flat brush, dip it in some water, and let's just get some of that paint there. You can see it's quite a loose runny mix. The only time we want it this loose and runny is when we do our drawing. Okay, now the important part of drawing in the way that I teach it with the Moore method is that we look for big shapes. And if we place our half a dozen big shapes correctly, um, the details will take care of themselves in step three, right? So this step one drawing part of the process, you don't want to uh, look at little details, you want to look at big details. Where are the big shapes, right? So the very first thing that I would want to find on here as a starting point is this pier. Because I think from that pier, you can work out the locations of your boats and you can work out then the locations of buildings above that pier line. That to me is probably the most important. So I often just measure it with my fingers. If I take the top of the pier to the bottom of the photo and then I replicate that there, so you can see it's, it's not quite halfway up. But it's not a third either, because a third would take us up to there, so it's, um, it's higher than a third, okay? So what I would do then is I would say, okay, my halfway mark's probably gonna be about there, therefore I think that pier is gonna sit around about there, okay? Somewhere there, let me just measure that. Okay, I've got that one a little bit higher, so I'll just run that up to there, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll just run in a light line through for that pier. Now, I'm not going to be concerned if that's not a perfectly straight line or anything like that. Come somewhere around about there like so. Don't make it too big to start off with. It's probably a touch longer than that. Okay, around right about there. And so I'm not gonna put that third boat in. Um, this other boat is sitting up just slightly higher there. And it runs out to around about there. And it's got a little cabin there. 
Actually, that's probably more around about there. So is this one. It's got a little cabin there. Okay, it's probably definitely sitting somewhere like that. Next thing is our main hotel. Our main hotel lines up sort of around about there. And it runs to around about there. This is the Fleece Hotel. It's got a little veranda right there and it's got a whole lot of darks and things inside. And that runs up to there. Flat roof. And that runs down to roughly around about there. Okay. It's always, when you look across a, a, um, you know, a town, a whole lot of uh, roofs in the UK, you always end up seeing more than the odd chimney or two. So what we're going to do now is the blocking phase. Um, so this is all about really just getting some colour down and um, getting an underpaint. And this underpaint may or may not necessarily still be in the painting at the end, you know. Um, we don't know yet. So generally we'll paint over a lot of the underpaint. But if we look at the photo, we've got all this dark in here. And then we've got this green highlighted foliage on top of the dark. So it would make sense that for our blocking of this foliage area, that all we worry about at this stage is, um, is that dark area, right? So you have plenty of blue and red in there. Little tiny little bit of the yellow, that'll gray it back a little for us. Okay, I could probably go just a touch white and a touch blue eye in there, just to, the blue will cool it down a little bit because it is in the distance, you know, it's in, it is in the background there. So it's gonna be a tone a little bit like that, okay? And just run it along the roof line. What it can do if it's, I've got the lights a bit closer than what they normally are, so it's potentially going to um, dry out my canvas a bit quicker. I'll just give it a little squirt of the water there. And let me just block that in. So at this stage, you know, there's no need to fuss with any of this. It's um, just get the paint down. What, what's most important is getting the values right of what we put down. You hear me talk about that a lot. Okay, run that down there. I might just mix that up a little, just a just for a shift in tone a little bit there. Yeah, you gotta get those values right. So I'm looking over here now, and that's a little bit more on the red side, so I'll add a bit of red in there. Okay. And again, I wanna get some of that dark off my brush and into here. So that could be a little bit redder if we wanted. But I'm going to mute these colours either side and at the back and I'll make this all in here being my centre of interest. I'll work on that being a little bit brighter. Okay. Something along those lines. We'll go just a pinhead red of there. A little touch of the blue just to pull it back. Stop it being too vibrant. Um, and I'll, I'll make that a Dark red roof there. So the Fleece Hotel, it's a ready brown tone. It was probably once a red brick, um, but that section right through there is a ready brown. So how do we get that with our three colors? Well, it's a ready, so we'll start with the red, right? And then to get brown, we'll push it slightly to the orange with the yellow. And then we'll get a little bit of the ultramarine blue, and then we'll have a look at that, and we'll we'll assess. All right. So that's getting there. Right, maybe a touch more blue. See, that's going to a darker sort of brown tone. I reckon a little bit more yellow would help that along. 
Okay, and then we've got this sort of chocolatey brown starting to emerge. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just test. Yeah, I think that actually looks pretty right. I've got no white in that, whereas the others have got white in it. Okay, and that's important because that'll make this one bolder and stronger. So I'll just run that in. There. Okay, so if that's the this side wall, I will put a pin header wide in. Actually, no, that wants to be darker. I'll, I'll go up that one. That's better. I just, so I mixed a wider light, a lighter version, and I thought to myself, no, I don't think the lights. There's not a, a really strong sense of light anyway. But I thought, being down a side, you know, almost down a side alley there, we'll, we'll just make that a little touch darker. That leaves us with underneath the pier. So I'm going to continue with this dark theme. Even though there's a fair bit of light showing under there, we'll add that light back later on. So I'm just getting even darker here now. And um, I'm just going to bring that down to the waterline. Shape up our boats. So, painting very loosely here, which is what I love. Nice loose painting. I don't like um, really uptight painting that you can tell that they've spent an hour on every brush stroke. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like it loose and fast. Mix it into the darks and everything that's already there so that it grays back a bit. Something like that. Okay, so it's just sort of an overcast day. So here's a bluey gray for you. And I can add some sparkle and highlights and extra um, extra reflections and things into that later on. As I said, we're just in this second step of blocking in. We're just really wanting to establish a tonal structure for the painting, which I think we've done. Take a little horizontal rod. muck down for the bottom here now so I've got a bit of darker tone in there so on my palette I've got fresh paint um, ultramarine blue lizard and crimson yellow ochre cadmium yellow titanium white should be no surprises there for those of you who have been with me for a bit okay I'll pop that there so you can see in fact I'll just move that across like that Okay, and um, I think what we'll do, we'll start out in the back here and we'll start to get some greens down. So if you've done my colour mixing course, you'll know that green is blue, yellow ochre. Okay, that'll green that up. And we'll do um, we'll do a mid-tone first, and then we'll do a highlight a bit later. But I will start to introduce a little bit of cadmium yellow into that. And I need a pinhead of red. <coughs> Can you see how much there I've got? Let me just see, yeah, little pinhead. Why do I need a pinhead of red in there? That third primary will gray it back so that it won't be jumping forward. If the color's too saturated, it'll want to come forward in the eye of the viewer, okay? So when you have all three primaries in there, it will settle it back. I could put just a tiny little pinhead of white in there, but I don't want too much white at this stage. Now through here, and this is going to look fairly bright by comparison with um, the darks that we've got on there at the moment. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to just pick my way through following the photo a little, but also following where I feel that we're going to need some clumps of bushes here. Make it a little bit sparse in a few places. In behind the pub here, it's fairly thick. Okay, and 
it's another opportunity just to establish the negative shape of the pub. Okay. So a number of windows. So I've, I've just mixed up a bluey gray for the dark inside the windows. Okay. So I'm just going to lightly put those on. I'm leaving a little bit of that brick color to come through, but you don't want too much of that brick color to come through, although it will indicate things happening inside the, the building here. So this is quite symmetrical. Window on either side, the two windows inside. Oh, while I've got that color, I'll just run it through there. And so that brings us to the harbour. Seeing as how I've sort of started doing posts and uprighty type things, let us get into this harbour um, structure a little bit. So I'm going to mix, I don't want it to be as light as what I've just done there. Um, I've kind of left a gap through here, so I'll make it a nice timber beam through there. Because I didn't put it in during the block-in phase, we sort of indicated it, but we didn't really get it in. So I'll put that there, and then we've got into the water, got that ladder there. Another ladder there. And we'll put some little highlights on those just to make them pop out a little bit more. We'll put that one in through there. It's more of a main support beam. Okay, underneath there. And we're probably going to need one or two in there. Now what I'll do is I'll just run up, even though it's not actually in the painting. Just in a few spots I'll put some cross bars like so. Okay. Now let's have a little look at our boats here. I think um, it's time, so we'll get some blue. We'll put in a pin of red in that. It's going to get make it darker. Run that in. It's fairly saturated paint. And then we'll add a little touch of white in there as we get towards the back. Like so. Now, there's not a lot in the painting, but I will be nice to have a little bit of reflection in there, a bit of, sh a little bit of blue just in there like so. Not sure exactly what we'll do with that yet, but it doesn't hurt to start thinking about it now. In here we'll get some windows happening and a fair bit of white in there. Whoops, that's oh, not good is it? I need to organise myself a bit better. So we'll take some white, pop that there. Just get a little bit of this gray here. So we're down pure white, a little touch of the blue. There we go. Run that into this boat here. So 
something along those lines. And I'll just lightly rub the brush in there like so. reflection take that same white for this boat here and that way the two are connected there's a big section of it at the back there run that down there and it has a white section at the back but we'll get to that now, the black tire or the black chimney pot, no, they're not, they're cray piles. That's what they are. So we'll take this dark and we'll add white to it. And then we shall just go and draw them all in, just the highlight ends of them. Piled up high there, and notice I'm not even drawing perfect circles or anything like that, just little specks of detail. With a few of them that are round. ones as well. Maybe some other fishing equipment there. Let us now, so I'm just finding different things to do just to keep bringing it all into balance. Um, let us now get some blue and white. And we'll mix up a lighter version of that ocean or that watercolour start to find a few spots where we might be able to just lighten that water so I do feel as though we've got that just a little bit too dark but we will use, utilize the dark and put this light on but we won't put it in a heavy coating so that we get some of that dark coming through there on the roof and it also is the boys or the I'm not even sure what you call these things now I've got that just a little bit on the light side I think we need to um, get some darker red in there as well okay type our golden fleece color here does the trick now I put that shadow in because what I want to do is where will I put it I'm going to ignore the shadow now and put plenty of paint So it creates like a little 3D effect there. Now I'm thinking that's about where we are going to leave this one. Um, yeah, you could keep going on with it quite a bit. 
You always find lots and lots of other little details um, to do, but I think overall we've achieved our um, objective. Uh, created a nice little harbour village scene of Whitby. And um, it's not a bad little painting. Certainly one that's worth having a go at. I think anybody at any level can pretty well achieve this painting. If you have a go. Um, the Fleece Hotel at Whitby Harbour. Nice little painting. It's a, yeah, there's a fair bit in it. And um, you'll want to watch this video again and take your time, work your way through it. Um, but in the end, you're going to end up with what I think is quite a pleasing little painting. And um, you know, there's one that you could easily get framed up and, and uh, sit it on the wall if you wanted to. Let's just take the tape off and have a look. Because this is on a, a loose canvas, this one. Um, which always is good when you reveal the full painting by taking it off, taking off the masking tape. So there you go folks, the, uh, the Fleece Hotel at the port of Whippy, Whippy Harbour. Um, a nice little painting, make a good little frame painting and uh, have a go at this one, I think you'll enjoy it. Make sure you drop by www.learntopaint.tv and check out our website there for all the other episodes of Learn to Paint TV. And uh, tune in next week for another exciting episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Happy painting.